Maybe I should call the December installment Bargain Sack. You know, December, Christmas, Santa Sack, lame joke. Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. It is time once again for my monthly bargain bag feature for the month of December in this case. And yes, Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags, seven discs each, from the late Skips Records and CD World. And between the bags, I will be talking about and introducing you, hopefully, to a CD that I have found or that you may be likely to find in the bargain bin of a music retailer near you. It's usually something I'm very quite fond of and, and have owned in my collection for a long time. Or sometimes it may be a CD that I recently discovered in the Bargain Bag feature itself. Uh, but before the bags, I will be breaking down and talking about the CDs that I found in last month's pair of Bargain Bags. I have listened to them over the past month, and I'll tell you what I thought about them. Sorry, there was a piece of lint floating around in front of the camera. I just swatted it away. Uh, anyway, yes, I will be missing... Uh, the bargain bag feature when I retire it at the end of next year, uh, but in some ways I won't because, and this month is actually a good example of that, or that is to say last month's CDs are a good example of that. Uh, see, with bargain bag I have been listening to so many CDs every month, this is an extra 14 CDs that I have to listen to each month, and you know, the more music you listen to, the more it kind of all blends together and nothing, you know, fewer things really stand out at you. And this is a good case in point. This was a pretty disappointing bargain bag. I will be keeping maybe three of the CDs, and at least one of those I'm kind of on the fence about. Oh, and by the way, if you want any of the CDs I'm casting off, uh, let me know in a direct message on either Twitter or Instagram, or in the comments section down below. Uh, if you want one or two CDs and live in the States, I can send, it to, send them to you, no postage necessary. If you want more than two and, and or you live outside of the country, we might have to talk about postage with them. Uh, and I keep these for about two weeks after the upload date of this video. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and break down last month's CDs. My Name is Michael and Other Hit Songs. I tried looking up information on this one on the internet, and there, there was a very good reason why I couldn't find anything. This is a benefit CD from a local organization. It was put out several years ago. And uh, I hate to use the word amateurish just because that makes it sound like I'm trashing this. But, I mean... This pretty much was uh, amateur musicians doing, you know, doing songs and stuff. So it's like it's not, it, it can help but sound amateurish. Not to say it was horrible or awful or torture to the ears. Just you know, I just didn't find. If I had had a personal connection to whatever project brought this on, maybe I would feel different about it. But as is, yeah, completely neutral and about it. And it is going into the castoffs, unfortunately. Uh, next one on here is Second Gen. Uh, Irony Is is the name of the album. Uh, Hip-hop with in elements of industrial rock and uh, electro and techno and stuff. Yeah, Just not really my thing. I like a little bit of hip-hop and a little bit of industrial rock. Put it together and it's an even dicier proposition. So, uh, yeah. And then the next one we have here is the crazy motion picture soundtrack. I had never heard of this film and I had a heck of a time trying to find any information on it on the internet. And I'm not sure. It's some kind of an independent movie, and I don't know what it was about or anything, but uh, Kelly Liddell is the artist. Uh, mostly singer-songwriter stuff. A couple of other, you know, Kelly does most of the music on this. A couple of other artists do a couple of other, other tracks, and yeah, mostly singer-songwriter stuff or very bland, inoffensive pop kind of stuff that just did not grab my interest at all. And then uh, Barbara Kessler, uh, her album Notion. This is singer-songwriter pop a little bit on the rock side, but just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, still, as with most everything, just didn't float my boat. Then we have Moses Guest is the name of this artist, I believe. And uh, this is kind of fish type of stuff, jam band kind of rock sort of thing. Uh, fish, maybe a little bit of uh, uh, Dave Matthews Band kind of stuff for, uh, around there. And yeah, I kind of like Dave Matthews Band never been able to get very fond of fish. I just don't really like the jam band kind of stuff, so this one was kind of meh. And then we have uh, one of the ones that I was kind of held out the most hope for in the, in this last batch. Shane Harper, his self-titled album. As you can kind of tell by his uh, Shawn Mendes-ish look here, uh, pop rock, kind of like Shawn Mendes, but just completely unmemorable, I am sorry to say. 
he's got a good voice and he's talented and he can I, I believe he plays the guitar on these songs so he, you know he, he's a good musician just the songwriting was very lackluster and very unmemorable it's not a surprise that he his music career basically went nowhere so yeah sorry to say and then these next four are really they just kind of blend it all together um, we have no knife and then uh, Mark Copley and uh, Razor Light is the name of this band here. And then we have Star 69. All four of these were very much um, alt-rock, uh, post-grungish kind of stuff. Uh, and, and as I said, you know, it's very, very unmen uh, unmemorable. Unmentionable. Uh, yeah, they all just, all just kind of blended together. I couldn't tell you what, anything that separates any of them. I had actually bought and uh, listened to the Mark Copley CD many years ago and uh, now that I have re-listened to it, it's not really any wonder that I couldn't remember any of it, you know, several years on. So, as I said, they're good at what they do. Just didn't strike a chord with me, <laughs> pun intended. Uh, then we have a, a three-track CD single by Badly Drawn Boy. Uh, that's an artist that most of you have probably heard of. Not bad. Um, I'm going to keep it probably and li give it a couple more listens. They didn't grab me on, on first listen or second listen, but I'm going to give it a few more spins. Yeah, usually if it takes more than two listens, it uh, doesn't uh, doesn't bode well for it, but hey, who knows. And then the three that I am definitely going to keep, uh, at least for now, uh, starting with this one, uh, Ronnie Baker Brooks. He's basically a blues artist. Blues with a little bit of country. Well, I guess blues with a little bit of country is kind of redundant because all, almost all blues has some elements of country in it. But anyway a very good artist and i'm i'm pretty sure i have heard of him before i don't think i have heard any of his music but yeah a good bunch of songs on here uh yeah if you like blues and you have not checked out ronnie baker brooks uh, give him a try i would recommend him uh, he's a pretty pretty darn decent blues artist and then this next one here uh, this one actually turned out to be the biggest surprise in this lot of 14 cds uh, the biggest pleasant surprise i guess you'd say uh when i saw the cover art uh it I was expecting to hear a very, very bland or very understated acoustic pop duo kind of thing. Uh, I did not expect much out of them at all. But they actually turned out to be a, kind of an indie rock sort of an outfit. A little bit of uh, electro synth kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, they're called Georgie James. And this is their debut, debut album, I believe. Actually, I think it was their only album, if I remember uh, my research on Wikipedia correctly. And uh, yeah, the male in the group is from a defunct rock uh, alt rock group called Q and Not You, and I think I had heard of them before. I'd never checked out any of their music before, but uh, yeah. So I, I was met with rather than bland acoustic pop dullness, I was met with uh, some kind of a, a, an indie rock sensibility, and I kind of like these guys. So yeah, I'm gonna keep this one at least for now and spin it a few more times and uh, see if I warm up to it even more than I already have. And uh, speaking of promising ones, uh, the final one in the group, which is another keeper for me, uh, this is the debut CD self-titled by a, an indie rock outfit called Ava Trout. And uh, yeah, these, this group stands out a little bit uh, partly because the lead vocalist is, is a woman. So it's, you know, that gives a little bit something different there. But yeah, uh, alt rock, uh, uh, late 90s, yeah, 1997 is when this came out. So yeah, late 90s indie rock, alt rock kind of stuff with um, uh, a bit of a jangle pop sensibility to them. So that, along with uh, the lead vocalist being a woman, reminds me a little bit of The Sundays. Uh, that's a group that I've mentioned once or twice before on my channel. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, good, ni nice, solid, mid to late 90s uh, indie pop. So yeah. So yeah, you know, a, a mostly disappointing uh, just because of the sameness of like almost half the CDs in there uh, lot, but a few keepers out of that. So. Let's go ahead and dig into the first of the two mystery CD grab bags. And, oh, the videos, this clip is running a little bit long, so I'm going to try and speed through them. So, first one we have here is, oh, it's a group called Sky, and I think I've heard about them before. Oh, it's, oh, maybe not. It's a uh, local artist, uh, Eugene, Oregon. So, I, maybe I have not heard about them before. Yeah, an, an interesting, uh, kind of a uh, older than you would uh, typically see in uh, a music group. So that could be interesting. Then we have, oh, soundtrack from the movie Bounce, which I have never seen. Uh, Lee Nash, Beth Orton, Dido, uh, Sophie B. Hawkins, Morchiba, Carly Simon, Sixpence None the Richer, BT. Sounds like a good compilation. 
trying not to peek inside. The oh, I forgot to give you the peekaboo. There you go. There's the peekaboo of the five that I haven't shown you yet. I'm a little beyond my game, what can I say? Uh, snap. The Madman's Return. I have absolutely no idea. Although the picture of the guy on the back is kind of interesting. You never know what you're going to find in these bargain bags. It's going to be interesting stuff. Oh, and we have Greatest Hits for the String Quartet. And this very prominently used to belong to a David A. Mitchell. I don't like it when people stamp or write their names on scene. If you're going to do that, don't ever get rid of it ever, ever, ever. It will go to your grave with you. Okay, anyway. Uh, and we have hmm, Rudy Paris, Making My Own Way. Oh, Making My Way, sorry. Uh, looks Like Country. Could be interesting to listen to, yeah. And I am peeking inside the bag, but I'm not able to see the spines, so I still don't know what I'm looking at. So, uh, Cody Sheridan, The Horse King. Oh, Cozy Sheridan, I guess. C-O-S-Y Sheridan. Uh, another one that I have absolutely no idea who they are, who she is in this case. Uh, so, yeah. Lots of unknown weird stuff. And after the last CD in the bag, I usually go... <gasps> that one didn't go very far. And, oh, the soundtrack from the movie The Piano by Michael Nyman. Uh, another movie that I have never seen. And so... Uh, I've heard good things about the soundtrack. I think, didn't it win an Oscar, or at least get nominated for an Oscar, I think? Uh, this was back when I was kind of sort of following, yeah, 1993, when I was still sort of following scores and soundtracks. I, of course, I've always been following John Williams and what he does, but anyway, I used to kind of pay attention to the Oscar nominations and Grammy nominations. But anyway, I could go on yammering, yammering, but that is the end of the first bargain bag. Okay, now, turning to the Spotlight CD for this month, or would that be turning the spotlight to the CD for this month? Anyway, uh, the name of this group is going to probably sound familiar to you as uh, I actually just recently unearthed their self-titled debut album in a recent bargain bag. Uh, was it uh, two months ago or was it last month? Oh, no. It wasn't last month because their CD wasn't in the breakdown of CDs that I just did. <laughs> like f***ing doy. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that is not the CD I'll be talking about today. Uh, this is actually their sophomore album, which I have owned for many, many years. Uh, almost the 20 years that it's been out. It came out in the year 2000. Uh, this is Holy Dogs, the sophomore album by alt-rock group Stir. Yeah, these guys have kind of an alt-rock post-grunge sort of thing going on. Uh, so, you know, in that way they don't really stand out uh, against all the other groups out there, except for the fact that I would... Uh, be tempted to throw in a little bit of a power pop uh, influence on this uh, this music because so many of these songs have such good catchy hooks in them. Uh, this is just great. I mean, the 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 opening song "Superstation" that's a great uh, great catchy song. Uh, "Climbing the Walls" is kind of a mid tempo, not quite a power ballad, but a mid tempo song that that's got another uh, a good catchy hook to it. Uh, "A New Beginning," and that is track four on this album, and that is probably the the most. Uh, arena rock anthem kind of a feel to it. Uh, it's, it's in a way, in, in that respect, uh, that song gives them a, a bit of a U2 vibe. So kind of maybe a little bit of U2, maybe a little bit of the Killers, because they have just a little bit, just a tiny hint of an electro influence in them. Uh, I am not really great at uh, citing influences or, or uh, comparing artists, so take that with a grain of salt. But anyway, uh, yeah, New Beginning is another one. Uh, Stop Killing Me is another catchy song. I mean, it's just got all sorts of great catchy songs on here. But the highlight on this album is actually one of the few ballads in this song, and that is a song called Grounded. And if you listen to one song, it's, you know, even though it's going to be not one of the more upbeat songs, it's going to be one, one of the ballads on here. But it's just, for me, it just strikes such a chord with me. It's just, I love the song. It's called Grounded. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to put... Uh, how to put it into words, but yeah, it's just got a great, very, very melancholy song. It, it's a basically uh, from the point of view of a, well, at least that's what the lyrics sound like, is uh, the point of view of a teenager, teenager who's been grounded and, uh, yeah, just is, is lamenting not being able to spend time with his friends or get outside or anything. So it's a very, very poignant and uh, song. It just puts a lump in my throat every time I hear it, even to this day. So yeah, listen to it. If no other song on this, on, on this album, Grounded, and if you listen to two songs on this album, make New Beginning the second song. So, yeah. 
just a, a fantastic rock group. For some reason, it it took forever for their debut album to really, really connect with me, and it's I, I'm still not nearly as connected with that album as I am with this one. And this, unfortunately, was their final album uh, on Capitol Records. Uh, they, 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 they recorded an, the follow-up album, but uh, the label dropped them before they put the album out. I think they put it out for free on their website years ago. But uh, I don't see how or why, well, it was lack of promotion uh, that uh, caused them to be dropped by their label. Just, uh, yeah, I think, I think this CD sold an, a grand total of like 45,000 copies, which I, it just boggles my mind how it could sell that low. It's just got so many good songs on it. So yeah, go look for this album on streaming or, or, or in this, the bargain section of your CD store, because it's just, it's great. In my opinion, it is one of the hidden gems of the 2000s decade. It's just a great, great album. Okay, now we have arrived at the final mystery CD grab bag of the year 2020. And uh, kind of like, was it last month that uh, one of the bags had a little tiny hole in it? Uh, this one's got a little hole in it too, but yeah, as you can see, it is so small that I can't really see anything out of it or through it or whatever the preposition is that I'm supposed to use. My brain's fried today. I don't know why. Because, yeah, one symptom of that was that I forgot to show you the first uh, peekaboo, but I won't forget to show you the second peekaboo. So, here you go. Let's see what's in this bag. We have Hoi Polloi is the name of the band. Uh, Spin Me is the name of the album. Never heard of these uh, people, these, these ladies. Oh no, there's one guy in the band, or at least two guys in the band. They have long hair, so it's hard to tell. Lame excuse, but it's my excuse. Then we have Dee Dee Wood. I have never heard of this person either. Uh, Tuesdays Are Forever is the name of the album. Uh, I'm expecting singer-songwriter Cheryl Crowish kind of thing from that, maybe. We have Crossing Cultures. It appears to be a world music compilation. Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Germany, Russia, Iran, India, Sweden, oh gosh, all sorts of Turkey, Japan, South Korea, all sorts of countries across the world. This one could be interesting to listen to. You you could, if you are so inclined, you might want to freeze frame and check out the track list on there. You won't probably recognize anything on there, but just it's just an interesting array. 17 songs on there, all sorts of world music type of stuff. So we have... Ivon or Ivon, I V O N is the name. Uh, My turn is the name of the album. I'm I'm uh, predicting R and B, possibly hip hop. And we have oh, I think I saw. Yeah. Yep, this one I had owned before, long ago, kind of like uh, uh, Mark Copley. I had owned this CD a long, long time ago, and eventually gave it up. But I seem to remember this one a little bit more fondly than uh, Mark Copley. So yeah, this is a group called the Din Pedals, and this was, I believe, their only album. And so yeah, I will be, look forward to listening to this one again. Can't, I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy it this time around or not. But, uh, and we have hmm, Pancho Barraza. This is uh, Mexican music, I would assume, or Latin music at least. It's in Spanish. That's what I know for sure. I'm not holding out hope for liking that one. And we have Kelly Mack. Another, yet another artist that I have never heard of before. So, yeah. Oh, and here, I'm not on my game tonight, Air. I forgot to... That one that went even less far than the first bag. It actually landed on my foot. That's how far it went. But, uh, so yeah. An interesting assortment of Bargain Bag CDs yet again. So anyway, that will do it for Bargain Bag for the month of December 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.